For the past two years that I've been consistently active on YouTube, a lot of you have asked me to do a setup for carnivorous plants, with a lot of those requests being for Venus flytraps. I kept saying in comments that I would eventually do something with them and the time has finally come. The reason that I put this off for so long is that there are some logistical issues with keeping Venus flytraps in a terrarium. As a result, this is an experimental build that may or may not be successful. I will talk more about that as we work through the build, but I think we may be able to pull something off. Anyways, let's get into the build. I've been in and out of Walmart several times in the past few weeks. They've had Venus flytraps in the garden section, but no one was buying them. Naturally, I felt sorry for the plants because no one wanted them, and I decided that it was finally time to do this build. So I bought three of them at $5 a piece in hopes to make a cool terrarium. As I said earlier, there are some issues with keeping fly traps in a terrarium. This is largely because these plants have specialized care requirements. Since they are a temperate plant, they need a cool, dormant period to survive long term. This is by far the thing that has me most concerned, but it may be less of an issue than I originally thought. Keep this in mind because we'll revisit it near the end of the video. Another specialized aspect about caring for fly traps are their substrate requirements. Unlike most plants that obtain nutrients through the soil, fly traps, like other carnivorous plants, receive their nutrients from eating insects. Therefore, any nutrients present within the substrate will actually be harmful to the plant, so we're going to have to mix up a custom substrate blend. Much like the substrate that we typically use for terrariums, we want this substrate to drain well, resist compaction, and stay moist without becoming soggy. To achieve this, we're going to use three components, including dried sphagnum moss, peat moss, and quartz sand. When choosing these components, it's extremely important to find ones that aren't enriched with nutrients. The reason being that we want this substrate to be as absent of nutrients as possible. Now then, we'll get roughly one part of peat moss, two parts of dried sphagnum moss, and one part of quartz sand and mix them together. After everything is thoroughly mixed together, you should end up with something that looks like this. There are other substrate mixes that could work, but this one seemed like it would work well for a terrarium and it will fulfill the plant's needs. Of course, we're also going to need a suitable container. I already had this awesome jar in my stockpile, and although I was saving it for something else, I knew it would be perfect for this build. Plus, that gives me the excuse to buy another one later on. When choosing a container for this build, you're going to want something that's decently sized because these plants can get somewhat large. Now we're ready to build the terrarium. First, let's start out with a false bottom. We'll make this just like we would for other terrariums using gravel and carbon fiberglass window screen mesh. Here I just have a bit of black gravel and some spare window screen from previous builds. When cutting this out, I find it easiest to use an object that's slightly larger than the diameter of the container as a guide. In this case, a bucket. So in combination with an X-Acto knife, I use this bucket as a guide and cut out the mesh. With the mesh cut out, we can dump the gravel into the jar, which I did using a folded piece of paper. I recommend going more generous on this layer for fly traps than we would for other plants. Just like in other terrariums, this layer will help keep standing water separate from the plant's roots, among other things. After getting a good layer of gravel down in the jar, the window screen was then put in place. Now we'll move on to the substrate layer. To add this component, I used a piece of paper again. As I dumped it into the container, I also evened it out with a fan brush. Before we move on, you may be wondering why I didn't add a charcoal layer. Well, I suspect that charcoal will add unwanted nutrients into the terrarium, and as I expressed earlier, that's not something that the flytraps will take kindly to. 
After getting a nice layer of substrate in the container, we could then unpot the fly traps. In doing so, you want to be as gentle as possible to avoid overstressing the plant. As such, I'm leaving some of the existing substrate around the base of the plant. From here, I planted one of the fly traps in the back of the container using various tools. I only started with one so that I could get a feel for how I wanted to hardscape everything from there. Afterward, I got some black lava rock and hardscaped a portion of the terrarium. I didn't really have a set idea in mind for this, so I just let the scape take shape on its own. After scaping for a bit, I placed an additional fly trap. Then I continued to scape the terrarium. Eventually I got to the point where I could start adding some moss and liverwort. Like the fly traps, these are temperate mosses so they shouldn't have any issue going through a dormant period. However, my only concern with adding these mosses is that they may contaminate the setup with unwanted nutrients, but I guess we'll see what happens. Using my tweezers, I went through the terrarium and placed patches of moss in a way that I found aesthetically pleasing. During this process, I also added some more lava rocks and a third Venus flytrap. Eventually, I ended up with the final design seen here. That said, we're going to have to add some water before we can call it quits. In doing so, you will have to use distilled water, reverse osmosis water, or rainwater. Pretty much any other type of water is going to have minerals in it, which unfortunately would kill your fly trap. I picked up a gallon of distilled water at Walmart for around a dollar, so it's not hard to come by. If you plan this out ahead of time, you could just as easily get some rainwater totally free. Finally, when watering your terrarium, you want to add enough to moisten the substrate, but not so much that you create a soggy environment. Also, since this is an open container, I'm going to have to periodically add more water. Overall, I like how this terrarium turned out, and I'm hoping that we can get it to last long term. As I said, Venus flytraps are a temperate plant which require a dormancy period. If you want your plant to last more than a few years, there's absolutely no way around it. During this period of time, the temperature will more or less cause the plant to go to sleep where it will reawaken in the spring. To replicate this natural cycle, I will most likely put my terrarium in the garage just in front of the window. I'll keep my terrarium there for around 3 or 4 months before bringing it back inside. To be more specific, I'll put it out there in November and return it to the terrarium shelf in late March. During this period I'm not going to do any updates or anything, I'll simply document the process and then release a single video when the time comes. Again, this is an experimental build and I'm not sure if it will even work. I think it very well could, but we're going to have to be patient and wait and see what happens. And that about wraps it up. I know that a lot of you also wanted to see a tropical carnivorous plant terrarium, but we'll save that for another video. I just wanted to start here, since a lot of you were requesting this video. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. If you liked the video and haven't done so already, take a second and give me a thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, if you want to see what becomes of this terrarium and you're not yet subscribed, be sure to do so and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. Finally, if you want to learn more about less experimental terrariums, go check out the video description for some cool videos by yours truly. Thanks again for stopping by and I'll see you next time. Peace.